Well, our special guest for this next hour is going to be Bob Fletcher. And uh, Bob, of course, has done a lot of investigative reporting. Uh, he actually makes videos. I do talk radio. Bob makes videos, excellent videos, and I think we carry just about all of them. How are you doing tonight, Bob? Okay, and I'm <clears throat> pleased to be here. All right, fine. Well, what are we going to talk about tonight? We're going to talk a little bit about the strange death of Sonny Bono, and uh, then we can talk about really whatever you want to talk about. But Bob has done a great deal of investigation. He uh, knew Sonny. He had, uh, actually had uh, sent a report, one of his reports, to Sonny Bono, who is going to actually to open investigation uh, uh, as soon as he got back from the ski trip. Uh, but he never got back. You pick up the story, Bob. Well, you know, it's amazing uh, uh, today watching, of course, all of the attention that uh, Michael Jackson, the performer, has gotten uh, with his death. And it was a surprising, uh, you know, surprise death, 50 years old. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what turns up to be the real reason for his death. And maybe it was just uh, a simple cardiac, or maybe it was more than that. Maybe it was something else. But what struck me personally is, uh, and I had been in uh, uh, the music business the earlier part of my life, uh, and uh, let's see, at, at a rather high level, I was a promotion director for uh, motion for MCA and Universal Motion Pictures, and uh, had uh, been involved at the very high professional level and executive management in the record and music business. So I had a you know a special uh, kind of a special feeling towards uh, any of the performers that were really great. And, uh, and of course, as uh, Michael Jackson was, and whether a person likes him, you know, or thought much of his personal uh, life, and uh, which, of course, I know nothing about, and most all of us don't, but whether you liked him or not, uh, he certainly was an extraordinary entertainer. And, uh, but it bothered me to see the, uh, the amount of attention given to his death, and of course, there's uh, the DEA drug enforcement is involved in it now, and the FBI, and of course the local police in, uh, have uh, gotten profusely involved with the investigation and looking into his death. And um, I had done a special report for Congressman Sonny Bono and uh, a few years back and had uh, put it in his hands um, his, as a matter of fact, it was at the request of his office. I carried out this special investigation, which was a very in-depth investigation into drug smuggling and murder and uh, uh, other related uh, interfacing with the uh, money laundering connected to it, etc. Hold that thought. We'll be right back. Well, Bob, go ahead. You were just saying, of course, that you'd done these investigations uh, and into drug smuggling and murder. And, of course, there was a question of some even CIA involvement in this. And so you'd carried out this investigation for uh, uh, Congressman Sonny Bono, and you'd actually given him a copy of your, your ultimate uh, video and report. So go ahead. Right. And, the, uh, and the, ref the report, the final report, was done on video. And it was uh, the, there was a sp specific reason for that, and that was that uh, I had uh, the extraordinary um, uh, inclusive part of it, uh, extraordinary parts of it was uh, that I actually had major drug warlords and drug smugglers themselves and high-level cartel persons, the bookkeeper for the Marien cartel, the um, uh, actual uh, a, uh, an in uh, an interview of, done by a friend of mine on the hill in Burma by the Burmese drug lord Kun Sa, who had come forward and uh, had actually named the names of people in the United States government at extremely high levels, which included at that time a, uh, a person who was the uh, Assistant Secretary of State for the United States of America. His name was Richard Armitage. He was named specifically by Kunsa, the drug exporter, uh, one of the biggest drug exporters in the entire world. And this was all done on live videotape for, for the report I did to Sonny. 
So when Sonny finally got to um, review it and go into it in depth, uh, he actually had it for a few months before they got back to me. And when he his uh, office uh, got back to me, I was living in Los Angeles at the time. They called me and they said Sonny w- was was livid that he was he couldn't believe the the extent of high level involvement in narcotics, and it was just making him crazy and that uh, he was going to uh, begin within only a couple of weeks. He was going to open up an extraordinary in-depth investigation by the Congressional Intelligence Committee. And they had already set up in advance uh, the ability to have subpoena powers. They were going to be able to subpoena people directly and bring them to the floor of the United States Congress before the Intelligence Committee, and they were going to finally do an investigation that should have been done years earlier. Um, Myself and other persons had uh, tried several times and attempted to get a uh, that level. Hold that thought, and we'll be right back here. Well, this is Dr. Stan, and Bob has just, uh, just been commenting on the, on the drama surrounding the tragic death of, uh, of Michael Jackson. Certainly an, an excellent uh, uh, entertainer, but uh, almost a, a hero's death, uh, it, unfortunately, pr- probably related to overuse of drugs. Everything points in that direction. But I said the contrast that then with the death of Congressman Sonny Bono. And, of course, Bob had been working with Congressman Bono. We had actually, actually prepared a report for him, and Congressman Bono was going to actually hold congressional hearings going into the involvement of the CIA and key people uh, in uh, in the government in the drug trade and certainly there uh, was some footage uh, in this report which we actually carry by Bob Pleasure on drugs uh, going into the fact that the uh, one of the major people behind the drug trade in the United States according to a man named Kun Saw who headed the uh, the Golden Triangle area there in, in, uh, in Burma well, a man was Richard Armitage. Now, I'm sure they, they, nothing was mentioned. The fact that Richard Armitage is part of the ruling elite uh, so at, the, at the time when he was identified uh, as a uh, in, being in charge of the uh, buying of the drugs there and, and from uh, from Burma. Why, of course, he was working in the White House today. He's a member of the Trilateral Commission, has been a member for many years. But Sonny Bono was going to investigate all of this. He had the the ability to subpoena people and call them to uh, come before Congress to um, to testify, and so pick up the story there, Bob. And so the um, uh, finally, Sonny did go over it and uh, over the report and decided to move forward. Uh, this would have been, without a doubt, not only the biggest thing that Sonny had ever done in his uh, political career, which, by the way, had started to be very very positive. Uh, he was. Uh, doing some some good work, and he had been well respected up on the hill. Uh, people originally, of course, it was a little bit of a joke when he first went up there, but uh, they had turned their uh, heads around in the right direction, and he was doing a very good job. Uh, he was uh, had decided to move forward with this investigation. Now, I had received my phone call approximately some time around. The I believe about the 21st or the 15th of December, something like that. And the uh, telephone call was from um, uh, a fellow named Frank Cullen, who was actually running uh, Sonny's offices for him, pretty much the uh, the main character there uh, at the uh, Washington, D.C. offices for Sonny. And he said, well, uh, he said, Bob, this is the first thing on this calendar when we come back from the Christmas holidays, which he said we're about to take off here in a couple of days, uh, they uh, will be gone for a few weeks, two weeks or something like that. It's a typical Christmas holiday for the um, uh, United States Congress. And the first thing when we get back is going to be the investigation. Sonny's ready to go, and nothing's going to stop him, and uh, we're, we're going to be underway. He asked me if I was ready to come into Washington if necessary myself, and could I supply them with any additional information and backup on the rest of my report. And I said, absolutely. 
I was ready to do it. I was enthused. I was very excited. And the idea of um, uh, an extraordinarily serious inquiry into major persons in our government, by the way, both Republican and Democratic, had nothing to do with parties. It, uh, they span both parties, and uh, both parties at the highest level had been involved with uh, money laundering, drug smuggling, and uh, murders, assassinations, and was all interfaced together. And uh, there was, again, as I say, live on our report, which I did for Sonny, there are statements by uh, very high-level uh, drug operatives themselves that explain who they worked for and how and what they were doing. So um, uh, the uh, we hung up the telephone. I I was overwhelmed with the uh, with the idea that uh, we were going to move forward in such a, a grandiose manner. And uh, son of a gun, ten days later, I like everyone else sitting in front of my television and uh, Sonny uh, Bono was dead on the ski slopes. And of course they told us that he had run into the tree. Uh, and of course with uh, m myself, my very first thought was, this is, I mean, what kind of a coincidence was this? This is so extraordinary and uh, very few people die from running into trees on a ski slope. Uh, you actually, according to official records, you can die more easily by, uh, or more likely that you will die by being struck by lightning in the United States than dying on a ski slope. Um, I immediately called Frank Cullen, the uh, person with whom I was dealing on a, a regular basis in Sonny's office, and um, to my maybe surprise and maybe not surprise, uh, he would never take my phone call. Uh, this was a, a gentleman with whom I had worked for a couple of years and on a regular basis, uh, uh, if I was into Washington uh, uh, for some reason or another, I would stop by, uh, even if it wasn't to, to see him, but I would stop in and would look him up, and we'd have a cup of coffee or lunch or something together. And um, all of a sudden now he will no longer take my telephone call, and that was as of three days after Sonny's death. So instantly... Uh, my concerns with the fact that Sonny maybe had been stopped before doing his investigation uh, became very serious. Uh, I started looking into things. I did the best I could. And, uh, and I, I kept running into uh, more and more um, uh, hurdles that I had to jump uh, and, me, and being stopped by every possible direction when I got into investigating. Uh, I did finally, without getting into the whole thing, which of course is available on uh, on a new um, a DVD that we've put out uh, recently. Um, matter of fact, both the report that I gave to Sonny and the new report on Sonny's murder uh, is uh, is available for anybody that's interested. But to get back to the story itself, uh, as I got looking into it, and I actually. Um, uh, finally was able to get a hold of the autopsy. And this is one of the reasons that, that really had pushed me in the direction to uh, spend so much time and effort on this thing, and that was the fact that the, the autopsy was being very secretive. They, they were not releasing it even to Sonny's own mother. She had a heck of a time getting a copy of the autopsy. Uh, and I ended up working with uh, her, his Sonny's mother's attorney and uh, with her assistant and, and others uh, uh, that were involved with it, uh, I did finally get the autopsy. And when I went over the autopsy, I was open to the fact, I said, I, okay, I'm going to go over this with a clear mind and see if, in fact, this is obviously an accident uh, and he did run into a tree, well, then uh, it was just an act of God and, and I would stand down. But what happened was just the opposite. When I got into the autopsy, on the very first page, there was uh, bits and pieces that didn't fit. And then it was like second page, third page, fourth, fifth, sixth. And, and as we went through the autopsy, it was every single page of the autopsy did not fit into the idea that Sonny simply lost his way and smacked a tree. And I'm absolutely positive 
after completing my uh, secondary report and investigation on Sonny's death, that he was, in fact, murdered to stop that major inquiry that he was about to begin in the United States Congress. And uh, it's just uh, one piece right after another when you go over it all. And we were able to get uh, the actual live footage up on the ski slope taken the, of the uh, where where he had had his theoretically had had his accident, uh, and that even shows to be uh, almost an impossibility that he could have run into the tree in the manner that they showed. Uh, then there was all sorts of small bits and pieces, like a tremendous amount of blood on the back of his coat and his jacket and his uh, his clothing, uh, a huge amount of blood that soaked through all three layers of clothing on the back and there was no injury to his back so that meant the blood that extra extreme amount of blood came from someone else and i believe it came from one of possibly two people that had uh, accosted um, uh, and grabbed sonny and and had struck him um, i'm positive the laboratory test that we carried out indicates that he was uh, probably killed I'm almost positive by being pistol whipped in the head by a person who was left handed uh, facing him straight on and someone else holding and grappling and holding him with uh, uh, in the back and probably got a bloody nose sufficiently to make that extraordinary strange amount of blood on the back of Sonny's uh, jacket. And then it goes on and on. My report shows many, many uh, uh, specifics that, that would just completely prove the case that Sonny was murdered. Now, and of course, the timing, uh, that speaks for itself. Uh, it was an extraordinary bad coincidence if, in fact, uh, he was only another four or five days he was going to be returning and uh, beginning the investigation uh, into drug smuggling and money laundering at the high level of our own government. Uh, Sonny uh, had been involved with chasing other similar uh, situations in terms of investigating uh, uh, drugs. And uh, this was the first chance that he had to do it at, a, at such a high level with the ability to subpoena those people that were involved. Uh, we had uncovered uh, money laundering trail, uh, uh, the uh, money laundering of millions of dollars and we had all the specific information. Uh, I even had bank account numbers and transfers of, of drugs money uh, in and out at the highest level of our government. Uh, we even have a situation that I had discovered uh, and all of the paperwork trail showing where the United States Treasury had made direct financial uh, uh, deposits into drug operations. Hold that thought. Account. We'll be right back. Bob, you go right ahead. Well, the um, the reason that I mentioned at the beginning uh, that I mentioned the uh, uh, the Michael Jackson situation with them showing such a tremendous amount of interest in his death, and uh, and of course we had the same thing with the Elvis Presley's death, and uh, uh, and turned out that his was probably his death was probably brought on by the uh, the uh, narcotic overuse, but that was not my my concern or my personal feeling as much as as the idea that there was so much attention given to these performers who have had these unusual deaths, when in fact um, we were unable to get any assistance with major media with the fact that Sonny Bono was murdered. Uh, my report is something that uh, if things were being done straight, uh, we would have a police, the, the appropriate policing agencies, whether it was the FBI or Secret Service, uh, or, or and of course the sheriff who originally did the investigating is still the sheriff, so he's not very cooperative at all. He's been polite, but he's not been cooperative. The district attorney, prosecuting district attorney in that area, also been polite, but not cooperative at all. So, and of course his his office, which was taken 
taken over by his wife uh, after his uh, death, uh, they're not being very helpful at all. And um, Sonny, uh, Sonny was about to file divorce, according to uh, statements that had been made by uh, people that knew him, including attorneys that knew both of them, that uh, they were about to have a, a go into a, a divorce. Well, in that case, uh, his wife would have gotten whatever she would have gotten, 25 or 50 percent of, uh, uh, of whatever was there, but um, uh, in terms of their household, had they split. But as it turned out with the death, particularly an accidental death of the congressman, of course, his wife got everything, and she ended up being able to assume his uh, congressional office and uh, is now in that position. So um, uh, the cooperation there is absolutely zero. So, and, and what bothered me, again, to get back to it, you have so much of this uh, policing investigative and, uh, in, interest in the death of um, uh, Michael Jackson and some other major performers, um, also had uh, you know, at the Carradine, uh, David, or John Carradine, David Carradine, that died, and they had the complete investigation on his death. And I cannot get anyone to move forward with the Sonny Bono investigation. And if you go over my, my, my DVD reports, the one I sent to him, to Sonny, and which I believe caused his death, and the one that we finished investigating him, if you go over that, and, you, and if a person can look you straight in the face and say that they still think it was an accident, uh, then it's because they've been drinking. Uh, I mean, you just there's no way that you can go over my final investigation and still say and believe that it was an accident up on the ski slopes. Uh, it, it's just outrageous. And actually, of course, he was killed uh, or not on the ski slope. He was actually over in the trees some distance away. How would he have gotten off the major ski slope a 100 feet off there, you know, where all sorts of trees and rocks and, and really there was no way he could have easily skied in that area. Hold on. We'll be back here in just a moment with Bob Fletcher. <laughs> Well, this is Dr. Stan, our guest this evening, Bob Fletcher, who's prepared a great video report on the death of, of Sonny Bono, which we carry. We also carry the uh, the report going into the CIA and drugs and uh, involvement of people at the highest levels of the American government. It was that re based upon that report that Sonny was going to open congressional investigations and subpoena people going into the background that the CIA is involved in the drug smuggling Everybody in the world knows that the CIA is involved in the drug smuggling other than the American people. This is totally blacked out by the media, but uh, certainly if we've talked to people from other countries, they understand what's going on. They understand that on one hand, America has a war on drugs. On the other hand, America, at least the, the dark side of our intelligence agents, are creating hundreds of millions of dollars, perhaps billions of dollars, to fund block operations throughout the world from the drug trade. And, of course, drugs are very expensive because we have increased, actually are involved in, in their growth and their distribution. Why simply would we control Afghanistan? Have we steadfastly refused to try to uh, destroy the opium crop there? And when the wicked Taliban were in power, why uh, there was very little in the way of opium being grown? Now that the heroic American forces are there, why they have the biggest opium uh, crops that they've ever had. Why is that happening? Well, Sonny Bono was going to ask a lot of embarrassing questions, and uh, but of course he never got a chance to call for the congressional investigations. He he died on the ski slopes, but where he actually died was a long way away from the regular ski run, wasn't it, Bob? Well, uh, uh, yes and no. It, uh, it Basically, uh, uh, y yes, you had the you have the uh, the ski slope itself, which of course is is a clear terrain with plenty of space, both left to right as you're going down any of the ski slope hills there uh, and and skiing. But uh, the the area where he was found was uh, 120 100 feet to 120 feet inside the tree line off to the to the right of where he was going down. Now, uh, so. 
In terms of whether it was a regular ski slope, no. But people do go in and around and about the uh, the tree area. But when you do that, first off, the big this is an important point. Uh, you know, you don't do it fast. You can't do it fast. It, it's one of these things where a really a highly skilled skier, which by the way, Sonny was. Sonny was considered to be an and not just good, but expert. He was really good. And um, uh, not like myself. I can't ski worth a darn. I've done it a couple times and was smart enough to uh, not go back. But um, the um, uh, the area where he was found, it, it's impossible to go fast enough to uh, to smack the tree hard enough with a big, big enough velocity to just kill yourself. It would be very, very difficult it might happen but uh, very difficult and but it eliminates the idea that because somebody had erroneously written once or twice in a few news releases uh, that he had just drifted off maybe was going high speed and drifted off and struck a tree well that's not the case he was like you mentioned not on the regular uh, uh, slope itself but a hundred to 120 feet inside the tree line so he didn't just veer off to the left or the right and smack a tree at a high speed. But weren't there some other trees around there down that, that he really would have had to have gone over before he could hit the tree? Absolutely. Oh, that, was, that was, a, 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 and, it's, and it's very, it's unbelievably visible on, uh, uh, again, after, gosh, it took me some six months to get a hold of the footage, but um, we were able to get the uh, footage that was shot of the exact tree and the location and the surrounding area that was shot absolutely uh, physically the day after when the sun came up uh, and uh, there was still the yellow police tape up and all of that um, accident scene uh, tape that was up around on the trees where he the tree that he theoretically struck the, the handfuls of things that were just didn't make sense uh, at the site one of them was that there was a large, like an 18-inch diameter tree, a big old thing that was a log that was now down and laying horizontally right in front of the tree that he theoretically struck. So he would have had to have hit, and it was quite snow-covered, but not enough that you can't see it. Uh, and he would have had to, he would have struck that first. Then there were boulders and, and, and rocks and things around uh, in several other parts surrounding this particular uh, a group of trees. And, uh, and then also there was even a bush on one part of it. And uh, so somehow they tried to tell us that he still struck this tree at such a velocity that it killed him instantly. And also, very important, and even the sheriff admitted it, and we have that on videotape, the sheriff and also the autopsy verified, and the, the, the sheriff says on a live video, which we have included in our report, uh, that Sonny apparently um, uh, never put his hands up to stop himself from running into the tree. Now, it strikes me that as... That unto itself should have been a sufficient red flag for somebody to say, hey, let's look at this thing carefully. That doesn't make sense. And that's uh, not counting other technical parts of the autopsy that didn't fit. And, of course, the blood on his back, which did not fit because he had no wounds on his back. Uh, but the idea that anyone can uh, be skiing at any velocity fast enough to, uh, that looks like you're going to hit a tree, you automatically, by natural response, you will automatically put your hands up in front of your face, uh, if, particularly if you're going in, head on into a tree. Uh, if you, uh, there were no wounds to his hands whatsoever to indicate that it, that it appeared he had done that. Therefore, both the sheriff and the autopsy, the, the doctor that did the autopsy, both specifically said that apparently he did not try to fend off the tree collision with his hands. That's ridiculous, all right, for starters. That, that just does not make sense. And if he was my son or if he was my brother or if he was my husband, uh, et cetera, I would certainly want somebody to look more closely into uh, the, the, his death just on the basis of those points. 
And again, like I said, the location was such that it was uh, almost impossible to reach any high speed. Then when you look closely at the autopsy, um, uh, I find out that, in fact, he had no trauma to his neck. And many people, most people, as a matter of fact, that uh, when they run in, you, if you have an automobile accident or if you run into a tree at a high enough velocity uh, on a motorcycle or you run into it on skis, most people actually die or are seriously injured because of trauma to the neck. You either get a broken neck or you get uh, a, a serious, uh, many people end up being crippled and it's from the broken neck and of course the, the spine spinal cord being affected from the head being jerked slammed back Sonny had no no injury to his neck at all no trauma to his neck now if someone strikes you with a pistol if you are pistol whipped or if you were hit with a blackjack or a pipe or an iron bar or anything like that or a, a, a fire poker from the fireplace or something like that the person's hit in the head a couple of times violently that will kill you, but it will not necessarily give you the trauma to the neck that you will get 95% of the time if you ran into a tree fast enough to kill yourself. Uh, so that was another point of the autopsy that was outrageous besides the blood on the back with no injury. And then also uh, the injury was uh, described as, uh, on, and it was sort of to the right upper uh, forehead in that area to the to the head, sort of to the frontal area of the forehead and the, the right side. Uh, and what uh, was very important in the autopsy, small technical point maybe, but that the bone was described where it was actually in his skull that was described as having a couple of places that were of a curved and a curvature of the bone itself where he had uh, supposedly struck the tree. Well, the reality is, uh, if you strike a, uh, a tree with an 18, 24-inch diameter, and you're wearing a wool cap, and you smack it, the chances of you getting uh, indented circular curvature indentions in the skull is, is almost impossible. And particularly the size, and it was the particular size was such that it would fit the front barrel of a 45 gun if you were pistol whipped, but it certainly will not fit in the diameter of an 18 inch uh, diameter tree. Uh, so that was another uh, bizarre little point that was right there in the paperwork, still is in the paperwork, and uh, nobody seems to uh, care. Uh, additionally, the, the hat that I referred to, which was a wool ski cap type hat that Sonny was wearing, had disappeared. It never even arrived, apparently, at the uh, doctor's office for the autopsy. Some place between the time that Sonny theoretically struck the tree and the time that his body arrived for uh, the investigative autopsy, the, the hat he was wearing vanished. Now, that's very important because, number one, it would prove the other side's point by, by showing possibly uh, ble blood and, and uh, particulate matter on the inside of the, this little knitted hat, or, you know, wool cap, or, and also possibly wood debris from the bark on the outside. But with the hat gone, the cap gone, the ski cap, with it just vanishing, we do not have it for evidence. Uh, we uh, do not have uh, the, um, uh, the goggles. They've also disappeared someplace along the line. That also would have shown, because he was uh, wearing uh, the uh, typical snow goggles, and those would have been uh, broken or whatever the case was. But they're gone also. They've vanished uh, and, and don't show up on the inventory of, uh, of goods. Uh, so, uh, and then even there's another small point that's never been proven that was brought to my attention by the lawyer that was working with Sonny's mother, uh, and that was that there appears to be a special ring 
that Sonny always wore had been wearing it for years. He had had it made for himself, uh, particularly several years earlier, as a pinky finger ring, and apparently that's gone. That did not show up in the inventory either. Now, whether somebody that would carry out a, a assassination for hire, a paid hit, whether one of those guys involved with that took that ring with him when he had uh, killed Sonny or not, I don't know. Uh, that's, again, another piece of uh, evidence, evidentiary inf- um, uh, material goods that absolutely has disappeared and uh, apparently was not with the inventory at all. Well, now, why did the sheriff and the district attorney refuse to investigate any further if you raise the question that uh, this certainly had uh, certainly earmarks of, of a murder rather than an accident? Well, I, I, I don't, I don't know. And again, uh, of course, one point. Let's let's put it this way: if the um, uh, the the sheriff, uh, by the way, the sheriff is still there, the sheriff that carried out the investigation. And I can briefly uh, uh, read you a letter that was sent to myself after the, I brought these points forward to them. Uh, he says um, in his letter to me, he says, Dear Mr. Fletcher, I have received your request for a copy of our investigative report surrounding the death of Sonny Bono at Heavenly Ski Resort. I am prohibited by law from releasing certain documents associated with deaths that occur in this county. See, now that's true, uh, and that's a, there's a separate point that I'll mention uh, in just a moment. He goes on and saying, specifically, I cannot release autopsy reports and medical reports of the deceased. The only document that I can provide you is the coroner's official record. If you desire that report, I will send it to you. He also went on and says, finally, I must tell you that there was nothing in our investigation to suggest that Mr. Bono's death was anything but an accident. Accidents such as as accidents such as that are quite common in the Tahoe area. Additionally, because of the status of Mr. Bono, we took additional precautions to ensure the accuracy of the coroner's investigation, period. And that's it. They never went any farther beyond that with any manner uh, at all. Uh, Now, uh, I had requested uh, from the the, uh, sheriff I had requested all of the autopsy, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what he did not know when he re- wrote this to me was that I already had all of the autopsy in general. I already had that. It had been supplied to me through uh, uh, the uh, the attorney uh, and that was part of the original inquiry for Mrs. Bono, Sonny's mother. Uh, so I already had all of that. I was just trying to find out the, because there were other little bits and pieces of documentation, such as interviews by the uh, witnesses of the people that had found the body, where they found it, when they found it, how they found it, and things of that sort. I was trying to get that. Uh, but for him to say, for example, uh, that they had gone into uh, uh, taking special additional precautions to ensure accuracy, that's ridiculous. Because I, of course, having the uh, the coroner's complete investigation, uh, I know that they didn't. That was baloney. Uh, why in the world uh, he would even say that? Or because I, I must say this also: no other investigation by any law enforcement ever took place in Sonny's case. Not the uh, Secret Service, not the FBI, or any other office other than the Douglas County Sheriff's Department. They're the only ones that did it, that, and the Sheriff Ron Perini. Uh, they, that, that was it. So there was no extra special, didn't bring anybody else in to go over this or anything. So that's a line of baloney. The um, statement that accidents like this happen all the time, is that his statement was accidents such as that are quite common. I don't know how common it is, number one, that somebody dies, because the truth is uh, there's only one out of like 50 million skiers a year 
that die. One out of 50 million does not sound like a common thing. And for him, of course, to, to equate the death of a congressman as being common is also ludicrous. So um, uh, why, I don't know. And uh, likewise, I must say this. I had gotten a hold of uh, the uh, district attorney. They were pretty much the same way. They were very polite, but they did not cooperate. I did get from the district attorney's office a list of the inventory of goods that were found uh, on the body. Uh, and that was partly where we discovered, number one, that the, uh, that the hat and the glasses were gone, the goggles and the hat were gone. I had already noticed that they did not show up in the inventory of the autopsy, and they did not show up at the police uh, the report. So someplace that's vanished. Nobody seems to care about that. Nobody seems to care about the fact that a congressman of the United States government about to get into a major investigation was dead up on the ski slopes under unusual situation. Uh, it, it, it's it's bewildering. I can't, uh, like I said originally when we started the program, we had all of this unbelievable attention for a rock and roll singer, uh, not to take anything away from uh, Michael Jackson as a performer or any of these other folks, um, but to have that amount of attention and to not be able to get anyone. I haven't even, see, I haven't even had anybody seriously challenge me. You know, I totally open up the door. I don't necessarily want somebody to just, just say, oh, well, you're right, and go along with what I said. Uh, I haven't even had anybody challenge me. Uh, there's nobody in major media, not a congressman, not a senator, not a police agency, not an officer, anybody has stepped forward, and it could be for good reason. If you're going to challenge me, then you're going to have to listen and, and, and go over what I've done. Oh, Chris, if, the thing is, if they totally ignore you, uh, why, nobody would know there's a problem. In other words, if they challenge you, that leaves us a controversy. If they ignore you, why, of course, your message will be lost forever. That's right. I, I would rather have somebody come forward at a high level of, uh, of, of whatever, whether it's law enforcement or newspapers or whatever, uh, major media of any sort, and, and have them say, you know, Mr. Fletcher, you are completely nuts. It's all it would need that, and then let me respond. You know, let me respond to that kind of a statement. Uh, or if uh, I'm uh, uh, out in left field someplace, let me respond to that kind of a statement, because we've had none of it at all. And like you said, if you totally do, if you just ignore it, then you don't have to answer any questions or ask any questions that may give good answers. Uh, because the uh, investigations we've done totally stand on their own, and I, I invite everybody that's listening, uh, if you have not seen our report, if you have not seen the report on the drugs connections to the CIA and, and other agencies, or you haven't seen the Sonny Bono in investigations, you've got to get them and get a look at them. Uh, it's imperative. And then I also invite you to send a copy to any senator, any congressman, any police agency that you know, anyone at all that could help us out, you send a copy to uh, to them and uh, let's see what happens with it. But it's uh, the idea that it's just been totally ignored uh, is, uh, is is a, just... Yeah, whatever. It's a, it's bewildering. Well, you know, of course, Senator Wellstone uh, challenged the uh, the Bush administration uh, as, as far as going into uh, uh, Afghanistan. Uh, his uh, plane uh, and everyone on it was killed in December of 2001. Uh, so we know that Senator Tower, who was former Secretary of Defense, who was raising a lot of serious questions on why he died in an airplane crash. We know that Congressman Larry McDonald, uh, actually in KAL, the Korean flight uh, 700, and uh, of course when they did find the, the, uh, the plane, uh, there were no bodies in it. No bodies, no luggage. Uh, how could that possibly be? Of course, you've never heard these stories. And we could go down the line of the case of Ron Brown, a former Secretary of Commerce, when uh, uh, when they had a bullet hole in his head, supposedly he died in an airplane crash. We'll be right back. 
Well, you got three minutes to wrap up the program, Bob. Well, like I said, I, I sincerely invite anybody that anybody at all that cares, even if you just even if you just like Sonny and Cher as a performing group, uh, and it bothers you, or if you have a, a, a spot in your heart for for honesty and and want to help out, get a copy. Either get a copy from from Stan, or get a copy by contacting us here at uh, Bob Fletcher's investigations.com and we'll be glad to, to send the uh, DVD investigations to you and then you make your own decision but uh, uh, gosh I, I don't know when, when you can get away with murder just on a regular basis and so many of these uh, 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 events have taken place and people have been able to get away with murder for so long uh, it, it's very scary. I don't know what kind of a future the uh, the country has when you have uh, the ability up there out of Washington, D.C. to uh, just kill people that are causing problems and then stamp their investigations top secret so nobody else can look into it. Um, now, listen, thanks a lot, Stan. God bless you, and you keep up the good work that you're doing. And... Uh, I look forward to coming back, and we'll talk about uh, one of these other outrageous investigations uh, again sometime. God bless. Thanks very much, Bob. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Bye-bye.